Okay guys, welcome back to part 3 of our Gordon Murray Automotive T50 build from Tamiya. Uh, we're picking up where we left off last time. We've got all our discs uh, assembled with all their photo etch and resin parts. I'm just going to detail paint some of the components of the hub itself. So we've got some Tamiya X18 enamel chrome silver and a nice uh, Winsor & Newton Series 7 brush. I'm just going to very, very carefully detail paint these parts. So with a steady hand, I've got my Tamiya Optivisor on as well, which is magnified three times. Uh, like I said, with a steady hand, we can take our time and get these painted as neatly as possible. Now, because we're putting uh, enamel over lacquer, as always, if we get a bit too much paint anywhere, we can use some uh, enamel thinners and just wipe it off as good as new. But as neat as you possibly can, this is where good brushes are well worth the investment. We're also going to mask off and spray the interior carpeted area. Uh, I've literally laid some Tamiya 40mm tape over the top in sections, uh, burnished it down with a uh, toothpick, and then cut it out of a scalpel. And as you can see, here's a lot of the components. There's a lot of components to this kit. There is a lot of parts, and the storage boxes I use are very, very useful. Um, like I say, there's lots and lots of parts to this kit. It is a very comprehensive kit, well worth the money, but it takes a lot of prep and work to get to this stage where everything has been cleaned up, primed, painted, and in the process of detail painted, ready for assembly. So we've got our monocoque interior all painted up. We've got some decals to go down. And again, there are plenty of decals with this kit. Uh, lots and lots throughout. So keep referring to instructions and check in where they are required. So obviously, they're on the instrument panel. There's a couple on the door sills of that uh, co uh, cockpit monocoque. And there's various decals here, there and everywhere. So keep referring to instructions. Have a look through where they're placed. And it's standard decal procedure. Uh, put them in the water, get them off the backing paper, get them in place. Clean cotton bud to get any moisture out from behind them. Make sure they're positioned exactly where you want them. Then hit them up with your decal solution of choice, which mine is the ultimate decal solution, the strong in particular for this one. Now we've got our engine cam covers that we painted earlier on. Uh, we have a dry transfer sticker to go on here. So these are attached to clear film and you basically put them on the part you want to place them on, put them in the exact position you want them, burnish them down with a soft cotton bud like so. Make sure they're in exactly the position you want them. And then once you're happy, get your tweezers and very, very gently lift a clear plastic and pull it back on an angle to yourself. Now if any of the letters come off, put the tape back down and burnish that section down. I just go through one by one until they're all burnished down. And there we go. Looking good. We'll repeat that for the other side as well. It's a, it's a tricky thing to do, but once you've done it once or twice, you'll get used to it. But it does work better over a glossy surface. The, uh, the stickers do seem to adhere a bit better. But like I say, burnish it down, grab your tweezers, ease the edge of the plastic up. As long as no letters lift, keep going. If a letter does lift, put it back down. Burnish it down again and just go nice and slowly. So as you can see, pretty trouble free here. No real problem. And there we go. There's the Cosworth logo on the engine cam cover. Now, this is the engine bulkhead going in place. So I was just planning on a test for here. And in the end, I thought, you know what? I'll just pop it in place while I'm here. So it's been painted in Tamiya TS21 Gold on one side and LP5 semi-gloss on the other. There's several components to attach in and around here. Like I say, this is a comprehensive kit. This isn't a weekend build. This is going to take you a few weeks to build. Uh, and just keep referring to those instructions for the assembly of the kit. Now, with the carpet, I just went with um, semi-gloss. I didn't put any carpet in this one at all. I toured with the idea of flocking it, I just thought the flocking looked a bit out of scale. I just wasn't happy doing that because in the real car from what I've seen, the carpet is very, very low pile. It's very, very short carpet. So I kind of opted not to put a flock in there and just go with paint. There's our pedal box in place as well. 
So getting all the components in. I'm literally working through the instructions with all our parts all assembled and painted, ready for installation. Which is the beauty of working through everything piece by piece. By priming everything together, you do one priming session. Painting everything, you do one painting, detail painting, uh, decaling. And you're at this stage then where everything is ready for assembly. And you can just whiz through really quick and get the model built up. It is a very efficient way of building. Um, it just seems to take a little bit longer in the earlier stages because you're doing a lot of the donkey work earlier on. We've got our center console piece we painted in part two. So that's being placed on its uh, kind of uh, trim piece inside. And then that is just glued in place. And as always, test fit everything. Do not commit to gluing anything in place um, until you're happy that's where it should be. Because it's easy to double check. It's harder to get off a glue part. So I put everything down here with CA glue. Uh, obviously, we've got paint surfaces on the part. So using our plastic glue would be a bit of a nightmare. As you can see, we've got our seat in place as well. And it's a very tricky decal to get in here. So take your time here. There's three decals, one on the bottom, one on the midsection, and one on the headrest. They all need to line up. So it's a case of getting it in place. And like I say, ultimate uh, modeling product, strong solution is my decal solution of choice. You can get that in place. Using our brush, get it in. Let's soften the decal. Then we can come back later and burnish it down fully. Now, on the suspension, some of my springs sadly snapped before I sprayed them. So I kind of bundled them together on a cocktail stick. Uh, luckily they've kind of snapped in a way I can tell where they go so putting the broken piece underneath where it can't be seen and twisting it around like so with a little tiny dollop of CA glue to hold it in place you'll never even know they were broken uh, they are very very delicate so be aware when you are uh, cleaning these parts up as you see this one broke as well only one of the three didn't break which is a bit of a nightmare but I guess it is just one of those things. Things happen when you're building kits. And sometimes just out of your control. So we've gone with the orange springs. Just as the box kit suggests. Uh, I like these orange accents on the car. Um, I'm pretty much convinced that you could pick whatever colour you wanted on this thing. So you could have red springs, pink, whatever you want. Um, but for me I've gone with the orange accents. Uh, on all the parts as well. And there we go. We're just getting that in place. Like I say, once you line up the parts properly. And then spin it round so the join is underneath. You can't even tell that they've been broken. So good save there. So be very careful with those delicate parts. A few suspension components on the car to go in place here. Like I say, if you've not watched about this car. Go to the Gordon Moore... Uh, Gordon Murray Automotive YouTube channel and there is the full everything about this car from development all the way through its progress in building prototypes testing a lot and it's really interesting this car is an engineering room marvel it is a beautiful piece of work and a phenomenal car so I highly just suggest you go over there and have a look um, for me time now here we've got the steering hubs with our poly caps in and a part that's trying to roll away and we're just assembling our front hubs. There we go, like so. And then just with a small amount of CA glue, we've got the hub mounting points for the uh, calipers. Now, refer to instructions. Make sure you get all these the correct way around. You don't want to reverse anything or get it wrong. There you go. Once you're happy, we can pop these in place. The top just, uh, sorry, the bottom slots in. And the top just clicks in place like so. Really well fitting. This kit is probably one of the best Tamiya kits to fit. I've uh, built it. does have a few fit issues. Uh, it's primarily on the bodywork. I'll talk about them at the end though. Uh, the rest of the kit is just an absolute joy to build. It really is. Getting our steering linkages in place here as well. Which would be, I guess it would be the steering rack on the real car. So it's a case of just... Uh, a little bit of careful placement. Try and straighten everything up. And just use our decal trees to squeeze it together. There we go. 
and then these little cover pieces slot on the sides as well like i say beautiful kit of a truly amazing car there we go a little bit of towing on the steering there as well i'm hoping it's supposed to be like that because mine certainly is a little bit of excess glue there but luckily if you're quick you can wipe it off and we can get these pipes in place one either side make sure you're getting the right way around they do have fixing holes where they uh, connect so it'd be pretty hard to get them wrong but still always refer to instructions there we go we've got our radiators in now as well at the front and now it's time for our engine cover so we've got what i would suspect would be coil packs to pop in place so they glue in from underneath be careful of any excess glue here don't ruin your work there we go there's both of those done and then there's various ancillary components to put on our engine block so remember we sprayed all this in part two uh now we've got lots of components to pop in place and a few pieces to detail paint as well so the fit of the kit is it's fantastic the parts just slot together perfectly i'll be honest you could probably hold them together with no glue uh, the instructions are really good, nice and clear and concise. And no real issues at all with the parts fitment on things like the engine, the suspension, the interior and what have you. There we go, just following the instructions and working our way through. Pro Scale Metallics looking absolutely fantastic as always. Very happy with how they're going. We've got our engine cam covers in place as well. And that orange is a welcome addition to the silver of the engine it helps break it up a little bit and makes it look a little bit less monotone so just keep referring to instructions following the way you're going i've got no idea what i'm doing here but anyway there we go so a liberal bit of glue on the back there and we can get the upper part of the suspension sub assembly in engine is an absolute marvel in this car it is a phenomenal engine from Cosworth, and it's quite well depicted by Tamiya. I think the only part that lets it down is the exhaust. They don't look exactly like the real car ones. It's a little bit, yeah, it's about the only area I don't particularly like. Everything else looks pretty much spot on. But like I say, it's referred to instructions. Uh, talk to yourself with hand gestures. Yes, yes. I'm gluing this part in here. I just glue everything in place systematically as you go through and like i say this is the beauty of doing all the batch work everything is ready to go you are literally just going through now and assembling all the parts so we've got our oil cooler is this going to be or gearbox cooler possibly i don't know what this is uh but again glues in place beautifully we've got the pro scale um i think it was stainless steel on the radiator and the ts21 from Tamiya on the uh, gold as well. Now we've got some highly diluted Tamiya uh, panel line wash. This is the enamel based wash. And we're just going to go around and put a panel line wash lightly on everything by thinning it a lot. It's not as obvious that there's a wash there, but it does give that tone, which helps add a bit of depth and a bit of detail to it. There we go. We have everything in place and that wash dry. We can wipe off any excess with a cotton bud. To be honest, when it's that thin, it's actually really easy to remove. And there we go. There's our exhaust in place. And now the exciting bit, we can mate the engine assembly to the front chassis part of the car. So a couple of generous dobs of uh, dobs, globs of CA glue on the mounting points. Well, I'm thinking, oh, I'll leave a little bit at the back there as well. We can get this all together like so. So the two bottom pieces pop in. And then the top piece just sits in there like that. Nice and simple. Fits in absolutely perfect. Now, don't be trying to close that gap up on that top piece. You need a gap there for later on. So there we go, there's our sub-assembly of the front interior and the engine, and it's looking absolutely phenomenal. The orange accents just look great. I think they really tie themselves together really well. 
and obviously we've also got more uh, on the back as well. Again, one broken spring. But we can fix this quite easily. So the rear suspension is different from the front. We've got the shocker and the spring as one unit. We need to line it all up together. It's a little bit tricky to do. But just look for the locating points. And there you go. They slot in really well. And again, we'll spin around that broken spring until it can't be seen. And here's the only spring that wasn't broken in the kit. There we go. And again, we'll pop this in place. Now, like I said before, I think those orange accents really tie this together well. It breaks up a little bit of the monotony of this metal work. Um, looks really, really good. Like I say, just take your time, follow the instructions. If things don't fit, they generally aren't supposed to go there. With a Tamiya kit, if things don't fit, you're doing something wrong. Again, the brake calipers fit perfectly to the hubs. Absolutely beautiful kit, the way this all fits together. And then we can glue in place our disc will go in and then we can get our rear uh, handbrake caliper in place as well so the brisk the disc kind of free floats and is held in by that handbrake caliper so just get it in make sure it all fits in make sure everything is lined up properly and repeat that for the other side as well and then we've got our drive shafts to go in place too so just get them in make sure they're nice and straight and then with a little bit of glue, we can start manipulating parts in place. So we've got these tricky little arms that go in place. So they lock in at the back there and then onto the upper arm of the suspension. You can see it there, look. So one just goes on the top there. It just locates in there like that. And then the other one goes at the back at the opposite point. And then the bottom one slots in the bottom as well. So you need to kind of be an octopus, but just take your time. A nice pair of precision tweezers is uh, is very useful here. Trying to get glue everywhere. There you go. Just slot it in. Get it in place and then get the bottom in place as well there we go job done then we can pop our rear hub in place which just clicks in the bottom it clicks into the top like so a little dab of glue on there just to hold it in place make sure we get it all straight before committing to the glue and as always these precision uh super glue tips from amazon absolutely fantastic anything i use in my videos including those there's links to in the description down below there's links to a big product list over on the forum and there's also my amazon store where a lot of these products are there ready for you to buy as well and there we go there's our front uh, sorry rear suspension in and all the brakes and drive shafts and what have you then we can start assembling the dashboard which is in three pieces this is a little bit tricky to assemble you need to be very careful here and be mindful of fingerprints off glue. It can't, it doesn't really locate as positively as it should, in my opinion. Uh, it takes a little bit of uh, working out to figure out where the locating points were. They are a little bit vague, but once you've got it and they're glued in place, they are fine. Then we can get this central piece in. Now, on the real car, this is gloss black in the middle. I opted to leave it matte black. I didn't like the look of the gloss black. Uh, so I've left it in the Napa black interior leather color and then our switch gear goes on the side as well These are our rotary switches for all the lights and what have you Then our steering column and steering wheel Glue together There we go Give it a second or two for the glue to grab and then it's a nice, healthy locating point underneath. With a little dab of glue, we can hold that in there as well. You can see, nice locating point there. Tiniest dab of glue, we don't need a lot. And there we go, it's all lined up. 
and then we've got our door card so a strategic amount of glue here does not need a lot at all we can glue these in place hold them for a second or two there we go that is those in place and then they glue onto the side of the dashboard as well and again just some careful test fitting dry fitting make sure you know where everything's going to fit before you commit to glue you don't need a lot of glue at all just the tiniest little bits And there we go, there's the second one in place. Just line it all up with its little mountain points. And there we go. So we've got our upper monocoque, which we masked off and sprayed gloss black last time. We're just checking, checking the uh, intake scoop on the roof, make sure it all fits in place. I'm looking for work and glue it, basically. Looking for parts that are going to be hidden. We've got a nice cup of tea there. Yes, a few people are going to complain it's weak. I like my tea very, very weak. It doesn't put up much of a fight, let's put it that way. And then some ancillary components to go in the back here. I'm not even going to pretend to know what it is. Same on the other side, we've got a couple of pieces to go in. There we go, just some careful glue with the smallest amount of CA glue. There we go, same on the other side as well. You see we've got all our components laid out there on the kitchen paper. Now, it calls for one of the poly caps to be cut in half. But it, I don't think it's actually for this part. I think I got it mixed up. I don't think it's actually for this one. It's one for the smaller ones, if I remember right. I might be wrong. Uh, it's been a while since I filmed this, so I'm not going to lie. I have built two and a half, uh, nearly two kits since I finished this. So it's quite difficult to remember sometimes exactly where I'm at. So a little dab of glue. There, yeah, I don't think that actually was meant to be cut. I think it's the smaller ones that need cutting in place. I forget now, like I say. Apologies, but yes, I'm nearly two builds ahead of this thing now. And then we can go our dashboard in place inside as well. Again, a quick test fit. Make sure everything fits in place. Which it does, and once we're happy, we can get a bit of glue in there as well. Now, the clear parts. These are very tricky. Um, these need no glue at all to hold them in. They all kind of slot in place and are held in by the window surrounds. So you need to be a bit of an octopus again, a little bit of a contortionist to get these in. But basically, they've got little mounting points where they kind of slot in. But it does leave them loose and makes them a bit tricky to hold. So, yeah, you could do with like 12 pairs of hands here. So, there's three pieces of glass to go in. You've got the top piece there, that upper piece on the side window, and a smaller lower piece. And we need to get all those in place and then get the surround on. So, this is going to take you a few goes. It did for me. But it saves mucking around with glue. Although, if I was to do this again, I think I'd use some PVA-based glue to hold them in and their mounting points and then put the surround on because here's the gloss back surround going in place now. Got some Bob Smith's non-fogging glue on there. And again, it's got to hold everything while the glue takes, uh, takes its time to dry. Tricky, but it does work once it's in place. Like I say, you just have to hold it for a bit. The downside to the Bob Smith is it does take a little bit longer to dry. The upside is it doesn't fog glass. So that is a, a major win-win for me. Now, see, repeat that for the other side. And there's our side glass in. Fairly trouble-free. And then the windscreen. Now, this has locator points at the top and then two points at the bottom that click in place. Now, I found them a little bit long, so I trimmed them on the bottom just a tad. Literally took a minuscule amount off, and they clicked in place so much better. Wheels, these have been painted up. We did that in part ooh, two, I think it was. So it was going to clean them all up. 
get our tires mounted, which is fairly simple. Just follow the instructions to make sure we get them all the right way around. It's a case of push them over the top. There we go. Make sure we've got the tires the right way, which we have. And then our center locks, little dab of Bob Smith's. Pop that in place and repeat for the other three. Nice and simple, smallest amount of glue. And again, these precision tips coming in just absolutely invaluable. They are absolutely fantastic. There we go. And also repeat that for the other two. And then get them in place. Now, a little bit tricky to get in, so don't be forcing it. And you'll find that it kind of lines up with the brake disc. And you turn the wheel, and the brake disc turns with the wheel. It is pretty cool. A little bit of a gimmick, but hey, whatever. It fits well, and the wheels and tyres go on well too. So there we go. Obviously, make sure you get your fronts and your rears in the right way. And there we go, on its wheels. And now we've got these rear engine covers to assemble. So, again, we've got gloss parts with semi-gloss parts. We need to glue these together without making a complete hash of everything. So, number one, use a very small amount of glue and strategic points. And number two, make sure you've got no glue on your fingers and that you don't ruin all your hard work. It's very easy to do. It takes a microsecond to undo hours of work. So, please take your time. If you're not confident, uh, use a water-based glue. It'll take a lot longer to dry. Uh, but for me, the Bob Smith stuff does work well for jobs like this. You just need to be very present of mind of where you've glued and not get glue all over your fingers. And again, multi-piece parts for this. So just follow the instructions until you get everything as is. There we go. Same for the other side. Got some decals for the center of the wheels. Now, I should have done these off the car, but I completely forgot. And to be honest, it doesn't make much difference whether you do it on or off. It's just uh, a little bit trickier to do with it on the car. So, standard decal procedure get them in place, get the moisture out from behind, and then hit it with the decal solutions, which for these will be the ultimate strong. So, just make sure they're all centered before you commit to any uh, decal solution. Like I say, a little bit of UMP strong. Doesn't take a lot at all. We can leave that to do its magic. And they'll be set in place absolutely perfect. Now, on to the photo etch. So, several pieces for this. Quite unusual to get photo etch of a Tamiya kit, but seems to be more and more uh, kits coming out with photo etching, which is good. I know a lot of people don't like photo etch, but for parts like this, they are pretty invaluable. They do add a lot of detail. It's better than the plastic mesh you get with a lot of the kits. So for me, a photo etch set is a welcome addition. And uh, just wait till you see what's coming up in the new year as a project from me. Stay tuned for the next uh, uh, Patreon bench update, where I'll be explaining that one. But yeah, there's a hell of a project coming up later on, uh, well, earlier next year. So we've got some Pro Scale uh, Photo Etch Primer. A couple of coats of that on there will give us a nice, ideal primer base for our paint. There we go. I feel like it dries almost instantly. Absolutely brilliant stuff. It's nice and thin, so it doesn't clock up all the, uh, the mesh or anything. Works really, really well. Let that dry for a good half hour or so. Then we can come back with some uh, LP5 semi-gloss black and put a couple of coats of this down. Um, and we're ready to go with our grills. So make sure you get all the angles with the mesh because of this, especially on PE like this. Tamiya steel PE is often quite thick. So you'll find you need to spray at an angle a bit more, whereas some of the thinner stuff from Hobby Design, etc. isn't as thick. So you may find you need to turn this to an angle uh, to get the paint on all the surfaces. It sounds a bit mad, but it's because the photo etch is so thick. Give it a few minutes to dry. Two or three coats of this will be more than enough. And then I'd let it dry for a good six hours before you handle it or start to pop it in place. But that's us for part three. 
Um, we'll be back very soon for part four. We get this awesome project all finished up. So I'm going to leave it here today. Thanks for watching. As always, loads of links down below for everything I talk about in the videos. Uh, there's links to everything associated with me, Patreon, all the forums, the Facebook group, etc. Uh, and yeah, like I say, we'll be back in part four very soon. So thanks for watching today. Take care. Bye-bye.